Now, if you'll remember, a rational expression is just a fancy term for a fraction. So what we're going to be doing in this section is simplifying some fancy fractions. Now, let's look at our first one. This wasn't too fancy. It's one that we're probably more or less familiar with. 28 over 63. To simplify this fraction, we just want to divide out common factors. Now, you can use any method you're comfortable with in dividing out those common factors. I'm going to use a method where I'm going to write each of these terms as this product of primes and divide out those common factors. So here we go. I see 28. I think of 4 times 7, but I know 4 is not a prime number. I'm going to rewrite 4 as 2 times 2, and then there's my 7. 63. When I think of 63, I think of 9 times 7, but I know 9 is not a prime number. I'm going to rewrite 9 as 3 times 3, and then I have my 7. So now I have my product of prime numbers, and I'm ready to divide out common factors. So here I go, 7 and 7. Nothing else in common, so that's it. I write the product 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. And because I use this particular method, I can be assured that 4 ninths is in simplified form. Let's go on to our next fraction. Now we're getting a little fancy, aren't we? We've got 12x minus 6 over 14x minus 7. Again, we want to reduce the fraction as we did in this previous example. But in order to reduce fractions, notice that we have to have products. In other words, we cannot divide. If we saw 2 plus 3 over 3, we can't do that, can we? Because that's equal to 5 thirds. So take that right out of your mind. We cannot divide out sums, but we can only divide out products. Right now, notice we have a difference. So don't be thinking of crossing those out, because we can't do it. We do not have a product of terms yet. So if we want to rewrite these as products, does factoring come to mind? That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to factor the numerator and denominator in this rational expression. Now there are two terms here. Right away, a GCF pops out. 12x and 6, GCF 6. Factored form, 2x minus 1. Let's look at our denominator. It's the same thing. 14x minus 7. GCF 7, inside the parentheses, 2x minus 1. Now notice we have a product of 6 times 2x minus 1, and 7 times 2x minus 1. So once we have products, now we can divide out those common factors. We can divide out this 2x minus 1 with this one here. So what do we have left? Simply the fraction 6 sevenths. So there we have it. Now, we're going to try a more complex problem. But really, the problem may look complex at first, but when we get it into factored form, it's going to be fun because we're going to have a great time dividing out common factors. Let's write the problem down here. We have x to the third power plus 11x squared plus 30x. Notice there, that's a trinomial over 3x to the third power plus 17x squared minus 6x. Notice that's another trinomial. So remember, in order to reduce these rational expressions, we need to have products. Products means we need to rewrite each of these as uh, a factors. So here we go. We look at our numerator, and right away, don't forget the key to factoring. Look for the GCF x cubed, x squared, x. I see a GCF of x. Inside the parentheses, that'll leave me an x squared plus 11x plus 30. Now, I hope you recognize that this can be refactored. We're going to do that in the next step. Let's look at our denominator. In our denominator, do we have a GCF? We certainly do. Notice all three terms also contain an x. So that would be our GCF. Take it out. We have 3x to the second power plus 17x minus 6. Are you following that? If you're confused, always check by 
distributing to make sure the products match. Now again, as I previously said, this is not in factored form yet, and neither is this. In fact, we have to factor these two trinomials. So here we go. At least in the numerator, these are the kind of trinomials that I personally prefer to factor. And the reason is, is because that leading coefficient is 1. So when we factor leading coefficient 1, we know that the only two possibilities here are x and x to give us that x squared. Product 30, sum 11. What comes to my mind is 6 and 3. Excuse me, not 6 and 3. How about 6 and 5? 6 times 5 is 30. 6 plus 5, 11. That works out. Now let's look at our denominator. Got a little tougher problem here. The leading coefficient is not 1. It happens to be 3. So again, use any method of factoring that you like for factoring these types of trinomials. I'm going to personally choose here to use trial and error. I have to use 3x and x to get my first term. Now, because this number is so large with a 17, I'm going to go ahead and use the factors of 6 and 1 for 6. And I want to get the product here of the 6 with the 3 to create an 18. And then the 1 here, when I subtract it, will give me my 17. So this trial and error method works if you kind of think of the products. And if you're looking for large or small numbers, you can place these you know, so that it will be advantageous to the sum that you're looking for. Now again, let's get the signs correct. We want a positive 17, so I want to make this a positive 18, a negative 1, which gives me the positive 17, and the negative 1 times a positive 6 gives me that negative 6, so it all checks out. And I know you're getting tired, it's a long problem, but now this is the fun part. Here we go. Now we get to divide out those common factors. What do we have here? I see I have x's, those go. I see I have th x plus 6 here and here. Okay, so what do we have left after we divide out those common factors? We have x plus 5 over 3x minus 1. Now, please do not be tempted after doing all this work here. Do not be, to be tempted to divide out those x's there. Why? Because these are sums, not products. Remember, we can only divide out when we have products of terms, never when we have sums or differences. So please, don't be tempted to stop right here. These guys work. And so this here, the original expression, simplifies or reduces all the way down to x plus 5 over 3x minus 1. Let's simplify some other rational expressions. We're going to simplify here 2x minus 5 over 5 minus 2x. Now at first glance, it doesn't look that complex, does it? But we notice that there are a couple of things going on here. For one, both the signs are the same. Secondly, the terms are the same, but they're written in reversed order. So how are we going to reduce a fraction like this? They're not perfect squares, so we can't use the difference of perfect squares. There's really not much we can do because there is no greatest common factor. So we're going to have to think about this a little bit. 2x minus 5, 5 minus 2x. What can I divide out? Certainly don't do that and don't do that because, again, we can only divide out common factors if we have products. So here's what I want you to do. E these, notice, kind of differ by just, we'll call it, a sign. So if I take this one, 5 minus 2x, and I factor out a negative 1, let's see what happens. Negative 1, now let's check the signs. Negative 1 times what is positive 5? How about negative 5? Negative 1 times negative 5, positive 5. Negative 1 times what is negative 2x? Well, how about that is plus 2x? Now let's check the signs to make sure and see that you're following along because this is a little bit confusing for some students. Negative, negative, positive 5. Negative, positive, negative 2x. Now you might be asking yourself, 
Why are you going through all that trouble? Why are you taking this denominator and rewriting it in this fashion? We've got negative 5 plus 2x. Now remember, addition is commutative. What that means is if I have 2 plus 3 for a sum of 5, I can change the order of my numbers, 3 plus 2, and still get the same sum, 5. So because addition is commutative, what I'm going to do is take this negative 5 plus 2x and switch it around. So it looks like this, 2x minus 5. You say to yourself, why are you going through all this trouble? Well, now look what I've done. Remember that this 5 minus 2x was the original denominator. Now this denominator is this, minus 1 times 2x minus 5. What I'm going to do then is take this and replace it with the equivalent expression, negative 1 times 2x minus 5. Now do you see why I did all that work? Notice what we have here now. Both the numerators and the denominators match perfectly. They only differ by this negative 1 sign. So what we can do is divide those out and we have 1 over negative 1, but we don't have to write it that way. We know that 1 over negative 1 is simply negative 1. Now, let me write some things on here that will make your life a lot easier. The original problem here was 2x minus 5 over 5 minus 2x. That was the one we started with. We all saw with all that work, it reduces simply to negative 1. What I want you to look for, so you don't have to go through all that work every single time, is check to make sure that the entries are the same, just a reversed order. Also, that those signs are both negative. So for instance, if I wrote another one for you, a, excuse me, that's supposed to be a minus, a minus b over b minus a, you would know that would be negative 1. If I did 3m minus 2n, over 2n minus 3m, you would know that is negative 1. Or if I did happy face minus sad face over sad face minus happy face, you know these would all reduce to negative 1. Just look for the pattern and you'll save yourself lots of